everybody. It's again a privilege to uh, to talk about a very a few important things uh, concerning um, Christianity and concerning uh, life and teaching of Jesus. But uh, before we get into the actual life and teaching of Jesus, we are just uh, going through a few important topics which is very necessary to understand, to know, to get a clear picture of the Gospels. So when we, uh, we have earlier said that Gospels are the main source uh, to learn about the life and teaching of Jesus. So before we get into the actual life and teaching of Jesus, we are going to learn a few important topics and today we are going to learn about the situation of Palestine where Judea Jerusalem was uh, located uh, we are going to learn about the situation of Palestine during the intertestamental period so before we do that let us pray Holy Father Almighty God once again we come to thy presence Lord Lord, as we are going to learn about the political situation of the area of Palestine during the intertestamental period, help us to understand, help us to uh, grasp it and help us to apply it and see how gospel, uh, gospel writers and gospel, uh, gospel work was going on during, during and after this period. For we pray in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. First of all, what is intertestamental period? The term itself we can understand. Intertestamental period means um, the time period between when Old Testament was written and New Testament. The time period between Old Testament and New Testament and there was a gap of about 400 years. For 400 years, um, no prophet spoke from God or uh, God did not raise up another prophet to talk to the children of Israel or the Jewish people for 400 years. It was uh, a silent, a silent period and this period where no prophets were there uh, for the Jewish people, we call it as inter testamental period. So what happened to the uh, Jewish people, their religion, Judaism, what happened to Judaism during the intertestamental period, that's what we are going to learn in today's uh, presentation. First of all, uh, we have to know that uh, uh, children of Israel were taken captives by Nebuchadnezzar in 605 BC and uh, they stayed there for 70 years and after that uh, they came back from Babylonian captivity but always always the Hebrew language and the Jewish culture was attacked and engulfed by the other traditions other culture other other religion other languages so when they came back from Babylon they brought in uh, a few Babylonian culture but it was not that uh, significant it did not affect them to a great extent and after they came back Nehemiah, Ezra all those people during Medo-Persian period that was also not so influential they were not uh, the Jewish people were not affected by this uh, Persian culture in a great way but after that something happened Babylonian Empire Medo-Persian Empire and after that came in Greek Empire. So we are going to talk a few things about Greek Empire. Uh, Philip of Macedonia. There were a few city-states in Greece. So these city-states, um, a person called Philip from Macedonia, he was a city-state ruler but eventually he captured all the city-states and gave it to his son Alexander in 338 BC. So Alexander was very young. Uh, he was uh, only about uh, 17 or 18 years when he became a king and he got this uh, authority, his power, his kingdom from his father and after getting his kingdom, after becoming the king, he just did not rest and say it's okay, this is enough. 
he was such an emperor that he be began his uh, conquest of the world and it is told it is written in the history that by 326 ad i mean bc he came to india he came to the borders of india and uh, 326 bc that is but unfortunately for him in 323 bc he died but what he has accomplished is very significant what he did was he uh, conquered the entire world as such and influenced it to a great extent to adopt adapt uh, greek culture greek religion and greek language so wherever he went greek culture and greek tradition was so influential that those indigenous kingdoms or places which they captured had to adapt had to blend with greek culture and greek culture is called as hellenism hellenistic culture which involves the adoration of human forms see uh, human uh, worship they worship human beings uh, egyptian culture they worship both animal and human form blend together and uh, here comes in greek culture which adores human form they worship the king they worship human forms of god and so this was hellenism and so wherever greeks uh, uh, conquered they uh, influenced that place to a great extent where they adopted this culture why this is important because the greeks conquered palestine also and palestine had to come under greek culture so after um, this was like 323 bc and after alexander's death what happened was alexander died without a successor he didn't have successor he had a uh, half brother and also he had a son born but they were assassinated by his generals his generals killed his half brother his wife and his child and what uh, they did was they divided the entire greek empire into four parts four generals of alexander they divided the entire kingdom into four parts and the four generals i just mentioned uh, they were kaisander lysimachus seleucus and ptolemy these four people took over the entire empire and we are interested in palestine so palestine came under ptolemy ptolemy took over palestine and we should always remember uh, he took over egypt and palestine and so he established his dynastic rule so his relatives his brothers siblings everybody started ruling the area of egypt and palestine but we should never forget that he was a greek he was a greek general he was a greek person and he took over this area so he will influence he will impose greek culture so palestine came under greek influence to a great extent and during this time this was about a uh, 100 years uh, this thing went on but it did not Uh, affect the jewish culture in a big way because uh, ptolemy and his dynasty dynastic rule never forced the jewish people to do a few things concerning religion and culture they were very peaceable with them they were very peaceful with them and uh, they said we will exist together peacefully and during this time during the uh, time of ptolemy and his dynastic rule Uh, and their dynastic rule um the jewish people migrated slowly uh, they went and settled in egypt also and uh, a important settlement of jewish uh, jewish people in egypt is called as alexandria if we remember here it is that the old testament scriptures were translated into greek and it is called septuagint so they were okay they were okay with uh, ptolemy ruling uh, palestine which includes judea jerusalem 
but after this something happened what happened is the um, the general who captured uh, who occupied the north of palestine his name was seleucus so seleucus took uh, the northern part of palestine which is syria and babylon and beyond and so seleucus and his uh, descendants ruled this area but what happened in 198 ad 198 ad um, the seleucid kings the northern kings they became very ambitious and they said we are going to uh, capture we are going to they used to always fight with each other this four generals they used to always fight with each other for supremacy so this uh, the northern king the seleucid king called antiochus the great he came and defeated ptolemies uh, defeated the southern kings and took over palestine so now from 198 bc onwards judea and jewish uh, people came under the seleucid kings the northern kings and they were not peaceable with jewish culture they did not like jewish culture they wanted uh, their culture the greek culture to overtake jewish culture so what they did they used to force jewish people to worship certain things and uh, what happened is after antiochus the great his son one of his grandsons um called antiochus epiphanes he took over and he ruled uh, palestine from 175 bc to 163 bc so 175 to 163 bc antiochus epiphanes is ruling palestine and he was such a uh, such a bad person that he wanted jewish culture he wanted the old testament scriptures to be eradicated so what he did he passed an edict he passed a government law telling uh, jewish people should not worship should not observe sabbath should not read the scriptures and he also built an altar at jerusalem temple and offered uh, pigs as sacrifice for his god zeus in 168 bc he started doing this so the jewish people were very much troubled this is 168 bc so jewish culture it is under threat and jewish people are under threat their religion is under threat so what happened when these things were happening there was a person called judas maccabi he is called judas maccabi maccabi means hammer so he was considered as a hammer so he started a group let us say he started something called as the maccabian revolt the maccabian rebellion what they did is they gave a open challenge judas maccabi maccabi and his father matatius they said whoever wants to stand for god join us and there was a lot of bloodshed and they said they're going to fight for their uh, scripture they're going to fight for god they're going to fight for old testament and this maccabean rebellion go, went on for 2 years uh, 163 bc uh, to 165 bc i'm sorry 165 bc to 163 bc it went on and in 165 bc the jewish people uh, were able to suppress this seleucid kings antiochus epiphanes was uh, defeated and jewish people declared their independence so 163 bc jewish people said we don't want anybody we don't want the ptolemies we don't want uh, seleucid kings we don't want anybody palestine judea jerusalem we are on our own we are independent we'll have our government 
we'll have our scripture we'll have our language we are independent this happened in 165 bc after this after this what happened was it's very interesting this is what we are, we have to learn very nicely after this in 63 a bc 63 bc jewish leaders by now um, the roman emperors the person who took over the western kingdoms of alexander kaisander his descendants had had uh, developed a uh, empire called as the roman empire so by now roman empire is uh, flourishing progressing so in 63 bc it's very important to learn this 63 bc the jewish leaders it was not that roman empire came and offered uh, dominion no the jewish leaders requested roman empire to come and rule them there is a very important reason for this the important reason is J roman people did not interfere in the traditions religion or culture of jewish people they they gave them enough freedom that you you remain free you can remain free as long as uh, you obey certain rules of the roman empire they will just let uh, people free uh, they can follow their own culture wherever roman empire uh, conquered they never force the people to change into their empire i mean their culture or tradition or religion so people jewish people thought okay let us not fall into any other uh, uh, power which will force us we can have we can be under this roman empire so from 63 bc uh, jewish people came under roman rule but what did the roman empire people did do they what they did is they took over palestine but they appointed kings over the area of palestine they just appointed kings they wanted only three things from this palestine the roman empire required only three things first one they want tax from this people which the jewish people were ready to pay say they wanted tax secondly the roman empire required stability they said no chaos i don't we don't want anybody to fight with each other so they uh, the roman empire appointed a few officials uh, centurions procurators um few officials soldiers uh, to take care of, of the uh, law and order condition and third the roman empire also had some legal authorities they said uh, minor issues uh, the indigenous people can Uh, decide and uh, can uh, have their legal uh, legal proceedings in their uh, individual courts but when it come com when it came to death sentence when it came to capital punishment uh, the roman empire said only the roman officials can do it so these things these three things other than this uh, the roman empire were very liberal they were very generous they said you can follow your religion you can have your language you can have your scripture so the jewish people were very very happy and what this roman empire did was they appointed kings over uh, the area of palestine or wherever they conquered so i'm going to talk uh, briefly very uh, quickly about the kings who ruled uh, during jesus birth and his ministry I'm going to just mention them and we'll stop for today uh during jesus birth there was a king appointed by roman empires um his name was herod the great herod the great was the son of antipater the first he was not a jew he was not a roman but he came into power and antipater first worked for the roman empire and roman government and he was able to make his uh, son herod the great as the governor of galilee this was in 47 bc in 47 bc antipater he appointed his son herod as the governor of galilee 
and Herod and Herod the Great uh, did such a good job. He was so efficient in his administration uh, that the Roman Empire made him the king of Judea in 40 BC. See, in 40 BC, Herod the Great was made the king of Judea. We call him great, not that he was a great king, because he was a great builder. See, he built uh, an aqueduct, a water reservoir, which is even today standing in the coast of Mediterranean Sea, uh, towards uh, Caesarea Philippi. So, uh, he was a great builder. So, we call him great. And he was the one who refurbished the temple at Jerusalem. So, only it's called as Herod's Temple. So, Herod the Great was a great builder, but he was not a good person. He was a man of blood. He killed all his family members who were a threat to him. And he was the one who ordered the death of, uh, killing of uh, uh, the baby boys who were under two years when Jesus was born. See, he was the one who talked to the wise men to give uh, information about where the king of the Jews were bo was born. So, Herod the Great and he uh, died somewhere between 3 to 4 BC. 3 to 4, uh, I mean 4 to 3 BC and uh, after his death, uh, when he was alive, he managed to appoint his three sons. He had three sons and they were all rulers of Judea, I mean Palestine. So, we will just mention these three sons because these three people are mentioned in the Gospels. So, we will just mention and then we will conclude this lesson. Firstly, uh, his son Philip was ruling. He had a son named Philip. He was ruling northeast of Galilee and uh, he was a good person and he uh, ruled for a very short time and he died uh, and in his memory we have this city called as Caesarea Philippi that was his first son and uh, second one is Herod Antipas Herod Antipas is the king uh, he was king of Galilee he was ruling Galilee and uh, Perea and Idunai so he was the king of Galilee and uh, he was the one who was present during the trial of John the Baptist and during the trial of Jesus. Jesus calls him the fox because when he witnessed the execution of John the Baptist, Holy Spirit God gave him a adequate opportunity to repent. But he hardened his heart and he was very instrumental uh, uh, during the crucifixion of Jesus. He could have stopped it, but he hardened his heart and resisted the prompting of Holy Spirit and he even mocked Jesus. And Jesus had nothing to tell him because Jesus knew that his heart is not open. So this Herod Antipas was the son of Herod the Great. And the third one is called Archelaus. Third son was Archelaus. He was the king of Judea. He was the king of Judea from 4 BC to 6 AD. Almost 10 years he was the king of Judea. But during this time period, see this is the time when Jesus was called out of Nazareth as a baby. Uh, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus out and they wanted to settle in Judea. But angel told them that Archelaus, the son of Herod the Great, who tried to kill baby Jesus, is ruling there. So you go into Nazareth. So they went into Nazareth and settled there. So Archelaus did a very bad job. He was not uh, able to maintain the stability of that area. He was, uh, he was instrumental in uh, arousing, arousing many chaotic conditions there. People were fighting and there was so much instability. So the Roman government banished him to France. See, that's the last thing we hear about him. He was banished to France in 6 AD. So what happened to Judea? Judea had no king. 
and Roman government what they did is they appointed a procurator a procurator to take care of this area so only we see so many Roman soldiers Roman officials during the ministry of Jesus and during the trial of Jesus Jesus had to go to this Roman officials because of all this situation and the Roman procur procurator who was uh, ruling during Jesus crucifixion is called Pontius Pilate so Pilate was appointed by uh, Roman Empire Roman government to be the uh, governor to be uh, the caretaker to take care of Judea and uh, quickly talking about Pontius Pilate he was his character his personality he was a very weak person morally mentally and he was stubborn and he would not um, be willing to be taught see when Jesus was crucified they took him uh, took Jesus to Pilate and Pilate had so many opportunities Jesus knew that Pilate could receive the gospel so when Pilate was asking him questions Jesus answered him and Jesus uh, desire of ages says that Jesus was praying for him so so only that uh, um, Pilate's wife had a dream see that was answer for Jesus prayer that Pilate's wife had a dream and she sent a letter warning Pilate don't have anything to do with that just man but Pilate hardened his heart and he knew he confesses that this man I don't find anything wrong in him any mistake in him but still when he was pressed hard when they were pushing hard he gave in he gave in to the pressure when the Jewish people knew that this man uh, he is not a strong person so the Jewish people forced him and he gave in and he was instrumental in handing over Jesus to be crucified so let us understand this condition of Palestine during the intertestament period and next uh, uh, presentation we are going to learn about the um, culture or few sects, few uh, division of Judaism and so on. May God help us to understand and comprehend these things in a better way. Amen.